This is the Wealth Ability for CPAs show. Better clients, better practice, better life. Here's Tom Wheelwright. Welcome to the Wealth Ability Show for CPAs, where we're always discovering how to create better clients, a better practice, and a better life. Hi, this is Tom Wheelwright, your host, founder, and CEO of the Wealth Ability Network. Uh, so we have vaccines. They are coming out rapidly. We've got them going on in Great Britain, already started vaccinating people, already started having problems with the vaccines. And uh, the side effects can be serious. Uh, so we're going to be rolling that out. It looks like the FDA has approved the Pfizer vaccine. We've got other vaccines coming along. It looks like there's three or four other vaccines coming along. Um, China's got a vaccine. And so we're employers and our clients are employers. And how are we going to deal with this? And what are our liabilities? And what are, what are the actions that we need to take? And what are the actions that we can take even? So today we have a very special guest, Bob Robinault who has been on our show before. So check the archives. We, uh, we did a show several months ago when COVID first hit uh, to talk about the um, liabilities with respect to COVID. Now we're going to talk about liabilities respect, with respect to the COVID cure, <laughs> the, the vaccination. So Bob, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for being here. Uh, just remind everybody a, a little bit of your background, if you would. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Again, I'm with a firm, Fisher Phillips, which is a boutique labor employment firm. We have over 35 offices around the country, and we uh, specialize in labor and employment law. I've been practicing for over 30 years uh, and, and help clients out in, uh, in various areas of advice uh, with respect to it, employment issues that arise, and also uh, provide advice to companies with respect to um, it, situations like this, where they uh, we've got a COVID task force that's I'm part of at the firm, and we're providing advice for employers in terms of how to deal with this really new uh, world we're living in right now. And uh, I also, I'm a litigator at heart. That's what I do for a living is, is, is defend employers in connection with discrimination claims, uh, work-related injury claims, and, and the like. So I've been doing that for 30 years. Uh, and again, I appreciate you having me on the program here to discuss this uh, this development. Well, well, Bob, since you're the defender of the employers, you you would be the good guy. You'd be you you'd be <laughs> you'd be on the good side of this with respect to our uh, our members and their clients, um, since we're all employers, right? And so this is a, a, a to me, it's a little scary thing. I mean, we saw in the the the, the Pfizer vaccine, they said, oh, we've had people get anaphylactic shock. Okay, I I'm. I'm allergic to tree nuts, and so I'm, I carry an EpiPen with me. So we know that there are side effects. There are side effects, even, even if they're not that serious of a side effect, people will feel sick sometimes for a day, up to four days, they say. So let's start with employees, okay, and what we do with employees, okay? So, uh, you know, we, we dealt with this during COVID, the masks, the, you know, do we, you know, do we let people work from home, which is where most people have really taken this is letting people work from home. But now people are going to want to get, get back or employers are going to want to get back. What, what are our risks and what are our, our, what can we do when it comes to our employees? What, what are our options here? Yeah, I, I think the, the most common question we're getting right now is, uh, can you mandate your employees to get this vaccine? And uh, the, the general response is there are some qualifications, but employers do have some strong rights to uh, have their employees in, in, uh, get vaccinated. Uh, obviously, if you're working in a healthcare environment right now you're, and you're an employee of a, uh, in, on the front lines, uh, you've been getting flu shots and, and they've, they've mandated those flu shots in most healthcare settings. So uh, that is gonna probably be true for this vaccine as well. There's a couple, couple important caveats. One is that you have, employers have to be aware that, uh, that employees have disability, have rights under the disability laws and the uh, religious discrimination protections. So if someone has a disability is in, um, and you may be a classic example, you may go to your physician, your physician may say, hey, Tom's not a candidate to get this vaccine because he has this risk. And I'm not sure that that risk is uh, something that uh, he should he should uh, get the vaccine because because of that risk. Um, you're in the employer has to honor that request. They can work through it. Now, it may mean that you have to accommodate that 
it may be that if you don't get the vaccine and you're out there at a register dealing with the public, you may still have to mask up. You may still have to make follow those social distance, but those accommodations are what are, are, are what you're going to do, need to do. It, it also applies to religious discrimination. There are uh, individuals out there whose religions may prevent them from getting vaccines or, or taking vaccines. And if it is a true religious discrimination and the employer can probe about that, uh, that is going to also have to be honored. Uh, otherwise, you all fall sideways of our uh, equal uh, of our Title VII laws. So uh, I would uh, note that employers need to be aware of those two main caveat, major caveats uh, in terms of whether it's mandatory or, or not mandatory. There's also a, the practical side of it. Do you, do you oh, want- the, it, That was the next question. Uh, do you want it to be mandatory? Is it, do you want it to be mandatory? And, and here's what we know, you know very clearly from what you were just saying, that there are gonna be some people in your organization that are not gonna get vaccinated, either because they don't want to, or because they have a you know religious preference, or because they're um, you know have issues like uh, you know they're the, being sick and so forth. So what do you do with that? I mean, you just let say okay, if you're not vaccinated, you wear a mask or you stay home. What it, well, practically what do you do with this commingling? You know, certainly until you've got you know until the virus is pretty much you know, dwindled, which hopefully it will, you know, sometime 2022 or something like that. But we've got a good year, year and a half before yeah. we really know what's going to happen, I think, with this virus and the vaccines. So what do we do? Well, I, th I think there's a couple of things. One, there are three ways an employer can go with this. One is to require or mandate all employees to get vaccinated. And again, that's a tough question for the reasons we just discussed, a tough way to go. Uh, but there may be certain environments, healthcare settings, where that might be the uh, what you have to do in order to really protect your workforce and protect the patients. Uh, but absent that setting, uh, I think you, as, a, as an uh, a employer, do you want to mandate this in, in, as a, uh, a part of the process and discipline your employees who don't get vaccinated? And what is that discipline? Uh, what, let's say that your best salesperson has a, an objection to getting vaccin vaccinated, whether it's religious based or just he just doesn't want to do it. Do you want to take him out of your workforce uh, as a discipline uh, for not following that policy? I think the answer is that you really, uh, there, again, you can mandate, you can facilitate vaccinations uh, is another thing. And a lot of people do that with flu shots right now. They will have their healthcare providers may provide uh, as an incentive uh, for people to do that, they may bring people into your facility to have the flu shots uh, administered at your facility. Uh, you also may be able to make uh, your uh, employees available uh, to go out, paid time off, let them go get vaccinated, make that part of your policy. Uh, so you're facilitating the vaccinations and encouraging employees to get vaccinated are all part of the process. A lot of employers do this with flu shots, and that's that they provide incentives uh, for their employees to, to get the flu shots, uh, whether it's gift cards, whether it's a day off, whether, uh, you know, there are a lot of different uh, ways to incentivize your employees to get that. Because I would think as an employer, if you're dealing with em employees, you want to get people back to work, you want to keep them back to work safely, you want them to deal with your customers uh, in a way that, uh, is that everybody's protected and this vaccination, uh, as we're being told, is, is upwards of 90% effective. So it is a way for you to get back to business and, and maybe a little bit more normalcy. Uh, so again, develop a plan at this point in time and you your plan has to have contingencies. If someone doesn't want to go through it for right. re reasons of medical disability or religious issues, how are you going to deal with that? Your plan should encompass that aspect. And you should also, again, make these decisions on maybe some of your employees you in certain areas need to be mandated to take the vaccina vaccination. And if they don't, you move them to another area uh, where, where you can allow those individuals to mask up and, and social distance if they're not going to get vaccinated. So those are the types of things I would be considering if I were an employer. But developing that plan of action is really what uh, I, I think is a, is a key thing right now. You've got time 
this is going to be rolled out over time. So I think there's some time for uh, employers to react and, and develop that plan. No, I, I think that makes a lot of sense, uh, um, Bob. I, 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 for one, I just, I'm looking at this, I'm going, oh my heavens, we really have to be ready for this because this is not something, you know, this is not something that's going to be over in three months. This is something that's going to, I, I think, be at least a year, maybe longer than that. Um, we have different types of vaccines. We have, you know, priorities and, and so forth. And, uh, you know, to me, it's, it's a time to really think about, okay, what I'm really, I'm concerned about my employees. I want to make sure they're happy and make sure they're working, make sure they're productive. I'm also concerned about my customers, okay? Because what, what, what's really been clear to me throughout this whole uh, pandemic is, is the, the, the stark difference between how people view this pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So you have some people that are literally scared to go out of their house, okay? And then you have other people that you go, this is like the flu. What's the big deal? So yeah. when you have that kind of diversity among thought process, you really have to be, you know, it's almost like when you're a teacher, you kind of teach to the lowest common denominator, right? So it seems like you have to go to the person that is most concerned about the virus. And those who aren't concerned just need to know that other people are concerned and we'd better protect those who are concerned, even if, you know, they're not high at risk. I mean, how do you how do you deal with that aspect of it? Because I think there's a big psychological part of this. Yeah, I think I think that's absolutely right. And um, it, it, we were talking ahead of time, and and I mentioned that I was uh, surfing on the TV the other day and ran into a, uh, a program called Real America, which shows footage, real footage from back in the day. Sometimes it's World War II propaganda films or whatever, but this one happened to be one of Columbus, Georgia, and it was. A footage of of the rollout of the uh, vaccination for polio. And I remember as a kid taking those sugar cubes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm old enough to ha be in that course of the population where we actually had sugar cubes we took for some of these vaccinations as opposed to shots. But uh, that footage showed the mayor of Georgia Columbus, he was the first in line to get that vaccine. Uh, and, and he's providing that leadership role for his his workforce and showing that he he's willing to take that risk because like you're saying this is it's not risk free i think that they're going to narrow it down and i think we've got some sense that as they develop the, this uh, through the protocols that there is limited risk but certainly it, it is one that people are going to have to make that leap of faith uh, to get that test done and i think there's a lot of people willing to do that but it, like you're saying, it's the ones that aren't willing that you have to deal with. Uh, and again, uh, employers, uh, I think, need to, to really develop that, that plan of action and, and figure out how they're going to deal with those reluctant vac uh, vaccine individuals and, and deal with it. You, you may have employers on the call here, Tom, who, who don't believe in the vaccines, too. Um, right. So, uh, I mean, that is. Uh, so do you think is, we're going to have, do you think we're going to have some kind of a passport, you know, like a vaccine card? Uh, you think we're going to have, uh, have an app on our phone? Uh, there's even been talk about tattoos, which scares the daylights out of me. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> please yeah, I, don't put a chip in my wrist. Okay. Yeah. There, there's talk about that. I've actually heard the. I actually heard a, a, a presentation by the Attorney General of the United States uh, three or four years ago where he said, everybody's going to be chipped and it's going to monitor all of your bodily functions and everything. I'm going, oh my heavens, that like is so, in my mind, so unconstitutional, so contrary yeah. to our idea of, of freedom and privacy and personal rights. Um, but we've got to have something to be able to show. I mean, certainly on our, you know, I would think with our passport, you know, we already have seen this. Um, I've traveled to countries, I'm sure you've traveled to countries where they require proof of vaccination. And yeah. uh, wh how, what kind of form do you think that's going to take? Do you think it's going to be in the form of an app? Uh, yeah. what's it gonna I, I think it's going to take multiple forms. I think you will have the paper form. People can bring in paperwork to show that they've gotten the vaccination. Again, employers are going to have to be uh, uh, careful that they are dealing with this medical information in a way that is uh, protects confidentiality. So that's going to be a part of it for em employers uh, in particular to deal with. But I think it's going to be part paper. You're, uh, you're going to have some of that old school, but you're, I think now we're, we're also going to move towards app. I saw 
that there's an app in development for, and the people who are pushing it are the big venues that want to get back to business, right. the, the right. football stadium, the concert venues. And they are going to have a situation like, just like you would with your ticket. You show it on your app, you come yeah, up. It's going to be a, a, a clicks, QR code, right? I mean, probably. It clicks, yeah, it clicks green if you've been vaccinated and, and you have the proof on your app. And if it, um, and, and if and, and if it clicks red, if you haven't, and if you're green, green, you're good to go and get into the venue. If you're red, you can't get in. So uh, that, similar to walking into a, a, a baseball game. I remember right. one time I, I was heading to a game at the Cleveland Indians uh, at a, uh, were in the World Series and I had a ticket and I gotten it from someone in my last minute. I thought, oh, my God, what if this was a scam? <laughs> this isn't a real ticket. No kidding, right? So when I went. I went through that turnstile and hit the ticket. I was really relieved when it hit green and the turnstile opened up and let me through. But I think, I think that's what you're going to be dealing with. I think that's well, and, it's really a, a, a new type of pat down, isn't it? I mean, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to, we're going to check your, we're going to check your bags. You know, we're, we're going to check, you know, to make sure you don't have any metal on you and we're going to check, make sure you're vaccinated. So let's talk about customers for a minute um, because I think customers Frankly, I'm a little more concerned about customers because employees I have some control over. You know, I can work with employees and so forth, but customers are a whole different animal. All right. I mean, we've seen it. We saw it with uh, the, you know, <laughs> I, I felt bad. My partner's name is Karen. She goes, Karen's no longer a good name because you had all these, these women, they call them Karens, right? That, yeah. that are yeah. protesting wearing a mask, which I personally don't understand, but okay. So if you're going to protest wearing a mask, you're certainly going to protest getting a vaccine. I mean, that's a way more invasive than wearing a mask, right? Wearing a mask is pretty easy. But what do you do as far as customers? Uh, are you going to be able to require proof of vaccination? Are you going to just say for the first year, if you come in, uh, you know, in, instead of doing it over Zoom, we're going to require a mask or a proof of vaccination? What are you going to be allowed to do? Yeah, I think that you're going to have options as an employer, and, and one of them is to ask for proof of vaccination. And if they can provide the proof of vaccination, like we talked about earlier, either through uh, uh, some form of paper documentation or through some form of, a, of an app, then uh, that, that will be one way to address that issue. And I think the alternative is if they can't provide proof, uh, then you go to these alternative means. It's very similar to what you do with the employees who don't want to get vaccinated is you have a plan of action uh, to accommodate that scenario in which you then require those employees to mask up and, and social distance. And that's gonna be true, I think, with the customers as well as they come through the door. If they can't prove vaccination uh, status, uh, then, then they're, they're gonna to have to, to go through that, those protocols. So I think employers, at least particularly for this next year, and I think you're right about that time frame, uh, are gonna to have to really uh, be comfortable with continuing with the mask uh, issue and requiring employees who, and, and customers who can't uh, prove vaccination uh, that they um, that they have to go through that process of masking up and socially distancing and keeping keeping that protocol in place because it even if you don't believe yourself that masking is the right thing to do as a business person. Most businessmen have made the decision, look, I, I'm not going to try and swim upstream on this issue uh, and run the risk that I uh, have infections that develop because I have, uh, have taken that stance, that uh, of not uh, anti-masking stance. So I think as an employer protecting yourself, you need, you're going to need to go, go through that process. Uh, it, oh. it's, it really is going to be interesting to see exactly how this uh, develops in terms of, of uh, the ability to determine who's vaccinated, who's not. And again, a similar concern comes in with, you know, again, we know that there's some immunities that develop if you get COVID. Well, that was my next question, Bob. Yeah. You read my mind. <laughs> you know, you, you've got all the, I mean, you've got millions of people, right, who have yeah. tested positive for this. Um, but we also know that typically with um, an illness, if it's a serious illness, you develop really strong antibodies. But if it's not a very serious illness, you don't develop antibodies hardly at all. So that's why we have to get a flu shot every year, um, which is a whole nother question. Are we going to have to get a COVID vaccine shot every single year, um, which I think is possible? 
okay, that this is an annual thing, not a one-time thing, just like a flu shot. Maybe they'll combine Great. it with a flu shot. Um, but what about those people that have antibodies? I, I mean, are they going to be able to take an antibody test and have that as proof of vaccination? Yeah, and I, I think that the science on that is not clear. And I, I don't want to hold myself out as an, an expert, uh, medical expert in this area, because I'm not. But what I have read is that they're not certain exactly how long that immunity lasts. Uh, I, I think they're not even certain if someone who's got the immunity uh, st still may be able to carry the virus. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of questions about that. So I think I think the vaccination is going to provide some uh, clarity with respect to, uh, I think they'll know how long this vaccination will last and, and the comfort level we as a society can have with someone who's vaccinated versus, uh, you know, the, the COVID test. Although that, that may be, if you're test positive for the antibodies, we may come to a point in our medical uh, understanding that you can rely upon that uh, for a certain level of, of comfort. But uh, again, I think the vaccine is going to be required in, in these cases, or you're going to want to have people mask up. Got it. Uh, so, so let's, let's go. Um, let, let's, ra let's uh, finish up with this, Bob, is right now we have a stimulus bill by the time this airs, it may have passed. Um, I, I'm not real hopeful, um, personally. Um, I, I think these opposing sides are like crazy. But one of the big issues that Mitch McConnell in the Senate has had is he wants protection for businesses. So what are the liabilities here? Uh, that's, I mean, this is your area of expertise. What are the actual specific liabilities that um, we have, first of all, as an employer, and second of all, as a, a business that allows customers into our uh, place of uh, business. Yeah, I think with respect to the first uh, issue, with, the, with respect to your employees, uh, they are going to have uh, protections through workers' compensation uh, process. And again, uh, those employees are going to be protected um, in connection with developing covid to the extent that they develop it and can prove that they developed it, the workplace, we're still seeing that play out as well. There's some, many states that have, uh, have, have presumptions in which uh, the, these employees in the healthcare field and in, in essential workers in California are presumed to have contracted the virus from work. So uh, you, you are gonna have workplace protections. And with respect to the vaccination, if someone develops symptoms problems associated with that vaccination, uh, that's going to be a, an issue for an employer if the employer takes the more aggressive approaches of mandating the vaccine or having it uh, provided at, at work. Uh, again, the remedy is going to be through the workers' compensation system for those employees. What do you do about your customers? Again, the liability protection for customers in terms of exposing them to COVID, uh, I I am just not certain what the what the uh, what they're going to do. I do believe at some point uh, there will be those protections will pass, but I think given the the uh, nature of the election that we just went through, it is going to be a little bit more difficult to get that liability protection passed. My understanding is that McConnell has backed off that for the purposes of of this next COVID That's relief right. package, uh, but that the president is pushing it. So it, it's still. It's still out there. And I think that what I have heard is that there may be a limitation on it. It'll be good for a year, for, a year, for six months or something like that, so that the liability uh, issue uh, is only a temporary uh, relief for employers. In the meantime, I think employee, employers do need to take those steps to protect their employees, uh, mask up, uh, social distance. In that process, they're also going to I, I think continue to require, most employers will continue to require their customers to mask and socially distance in their facilities. And uh, there's just, you, you know, and again, when you, whenever you address this stuff, it, it, there is, there are strong political feelings here yep. that people have. So I want to be careful about that, but you know, you, you really have, uh, I think a clear indication that uh, employers from a liability perspective, you're always what you're going to want to protect yourself in a way uh, that uh, that limits your liability. And the way you would do that, even if you may not believe that people can get it, uh, 
is is to require the masking and the social distancing and keep those protocols protocols up. Okay, so 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 in summary, you would you would have, as a business owner, you'd want to require uh, the masking, the protocols, at least for the foreseeable future, until there's more guidance out. Um, anything That's else right. that you that that you would want to make sure you do as a business owner? Yeah, I, I think that the business owner right now really needs to focus on this uh, on this vaccination process and make those critical decisions on what am I going to do when the vaccine is out there and made available? Uh, am I going to encourage my employees to participate? Am I, am I going to mandate some of my employees to participate? Uh, am I going to take a laissez-faire approach and not require anything? So I think it's important for employers to really focus on that. If, if you do vaccinate, uh, it's, and we're seeing this at the federal level, you have the three former presidents who said that they're, they'll be in first in line to get the vaccine, much like that mayor who got the vaccine in uh, Columbus, Georgia, I talked about earlier. Senior management in your company needs to be prepared to buy in. If you are going to vaccinate and encourage vaccinations, your senior man management needs to buy in and lead in that regard. I, I would say that if you're an employer, another tip I would throw out is to identify someone in your organization to be the COVID-19 coordinator. Because, you know, there's a lot of issues that are going to come with that vaccination uh, process, which include who gets it, when they get it, uh, what types of incentives are you going to provide for people to get it, how are you going to facilitate it if you do want to facilitate it, and then uh, what types of, of protections do you have to protect the medical uh, data that you receive, uh, because that data cannot be uh, maintained by an employer. So those protections uh, have to be provided. And to do that, someone in your in your organizations probably needs to step up and take that role as a coordinator if you're big enough to, to allow that to happen. Um, another thing I would suggest is using outside consultants and providers in this area. Uh, you may want to talk to someone who has some specialty and and those may be your insurers, your medical insurance companies that might be able to step in and provide some guidance in this area and help in this area in terms of the, the vaccine. And, uh, you know, again, another issue is if, uh, are you going to provide time off for employees who get vaccinated? What are you gonna do with that? So those are all issues that in, employers should be considering now uh, and developing a plan, a policy that can address those as, as this gets rolled out. Well, I, I appreciate that, Bob. Um, so I, what I'm hearing is we need a plan of action. Okay, uh, pretty pretty simple. We need somebody in charge, and that could be a, somebody as simple as an office manager, frankly. And um, and then the third thing we need is um, if we have the you know we have the plan of action, we have somebody in charge. Um, we just I think we need to be very much aware of who could be on our team to help us with this to, if we need to struggle. So just though we have a, a, phone, a phone number to call, somebody to talk to, uh, we're big believers in team in uh, the Wealth Building Network. This is all about a team. It's not about one person handling it. Don't think you have to do this on your own, I think is really uh, a big message here. And given that, Bob, how would we contact uh, your office? Yeah, I think if you wanna to get to our office, it's uh, Fisher Phillips. Uh, our website is fisherphillips.com. We've got a very good COVID page, uh, and we've actually got a vaccination uh, network that we uh, of oh, articles wow. that we throw out there. So, if people want to do that, that's probably the easiest way to get in contact uh, with our office. Uh, you know, I'm in our Columbus, Ohio office, um, so if people want to get in touch with me, they can certainly navigate through our website, uh, fisherphillips.com, and get uh, and get to. Uh, get to me either through the office uh, app or you can type the name in. Uh, Robinault's a pretty unusual name. Uh, so I don't think there's any other Robinault's in the firm. At this That's point. awesome. So. Well, thank you, Bob. Really appreciate it. Bob Robinault uh, uh, from Fisher Phillips. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, you know, having this plan of action, having this team, having this approach, having having somebody in charge, these are critical factors because we want to get back to as normal as we can, as fast as we can, while protecting our employees, while protecting our our um, our customers, and also while protecting our business. And when we do that, remember, we take care of our clients, we we help them with these 
things that may not seem like they're in our realm of responsibility, but I'll tell you what, when we do that, we always end up with better clients, a better practice, and a better life. We'll see you next Great. time. All right. Thanks, Tom. You've been listening to the Wealth Ability for CPA show. Better clients, better practice, better life. To learn more, go to wealthability.com. <laughs>